it's kit unboxing day. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm going to be unboxing the latest card kit from Simon Says Stamp. I'll unbox and then I will make six cards for your viewing pleasure. I have not seen the contents of the kit, so when I open, I let it percolate, and then we dive in. To see those card projects and the unboxing, stick around. It's coming up next. Commence the unboxing. I already took the label off. Oh. We're getting something right out of the gate. One of these wider blender brushes. Oh, that's kind of cool. I don't really have any of that type, but let's get this out. Oh, oh, goodness. Oh my goodness, this just fell out. And this is so fun because I designed this. Oh, it's always a surprise. I never know what's going to be. Okay, let me get the sheet out of the way. Hold tight. This is the September 2023 card kit from Simon Says Stamp, and it is called Be Happy. Now, this would be appropriate for me because, well, I love, I love bees, and I dress up as one every year for Halloween. But that's for another day. Let's dive in. So, again, revisiting this. Let's take this out. So, these, oh, how cute. It has a little handle, right? Our little logo, and then... A little pop cover all right you can pop on I tend to not use these because I don't I don't craft on the go and I'm always worried that I'm gonna muck up some of my uh, some of my brushes but that's kind of cute because you can just kind of sit it up while you're working and I love that this is called a background blending brush and I guess what's so nice about that is you have all that surface area right to cover a background with ink so there's that you're going to get one sheet of scrapbook adhesives foam squares. This looks like the thinner foam squares, and I don't know if that varies from kit to kit, but I never have enough of these. So there's that. Let's take a look at this. This is so fun because I haven't seen this die yet. It's new, and uh, yeah, it's by me. It's a little hello, and I love dies like this. I put it back in because I wanted it to seem more dramatic. I love a little die like this because it's kind of appropriate for everything. There's a nice, generous shadow layer, and you can pop a simple hello onto anything. So I am really excited to see this new die show up, and I love that they put that in the kit. Very all-purpose. All right, moving on. You're going to get a Distress Crayon in Vintage Photo. Now, I only have ever used a few of these, so this is kind of fun, especially with a kit that appears to be B themed, get it? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think you do. Okay, a distressed crayon. So we're gonna set that here. Now let's take a look at the embossing folder. This is called Crisscross Floral. Oh, that's beautiful. These, even though these are like little floral petals, they, they almost look butterfly-esque too. That is a gorgeous 3D folder. Oh, I love it. Okay, very cute, love that. Now you are going to get a Tim Holtz sanding disc. Oh, I bet this kind of sticks on. Let me, hold on, let me grab one of my tools. It is a sanding disc, so this pops right onto one of your little ranger tools, or you could just hold it and do it, to do some distressing. Oh, that's kind of cool. I have never used anything like that. That is I think we might be getting a little distressy here. Okay, so you you would need a little handle if you wanna use it the way I'm gonna show it today, but that's cool. I didn't know what that was. Next, we are going to get a stencil, and this is the Retro Flower 6x6 stencil set. Oh my gosh, that's cool. All right, it's layering stencil. Wow, this is, um, this is a packed kit. All right, let's see. You have, which way does it go? It goes this, no, here we go. Oh, and I love it because it says here, large flowers. So you'd start with your large flowers, then your leaves, oh, then the small flowers, then the flower centers. And it's all etched in there. That is my, wow, that is absolutely adorable. Huh, okay, I'm loving that. All right, let's look at this 
few sheets of patterned paper. This is from Paper Rose, and it is called Be Happy. So I wonder if that inspired partly the name of the kit. So this is, oh, it is double-sided paper. Oh, that's a gorgeous little honeycomb. Baby bees honeycomb. Uh, sunflowers, that's cute. Oh, a very vintagey stripe, wow, okay. You have a little sunflower field. I mean, that's a card panel waiting to happen. Simple hello up there, you're good to go. Love that. Oh, that's cute, honey and bees. Oh, and here's a bunch of little, uh, this looks like something you could just cut out if you wanted to, like all these little pieces. Huh, or look at that pattern on the back. That is funky and chic. Oh, and look at all these little tiny pieces here. Again, you could cut these out, use them as elements on a card or on a tag. Oh, that's funky. I like that. Oh, and there, again, the, you crop it. There's a card ready to go. That is really sweet. What a fun set. The next thing, these are, what are these? They're Paper Rose, uh, same company. Oh, die cut elements. Oh my gosh, they're already, they're die cut for you. So I don't know if you can see that, but easy now. Uh, they go like that. That is so cool. Elements to pop out, to pop up, and they coordinate with the paper. That is fabulous. Okay, because it's all this, yeah, mm -hmm, that's beautiful. Okay, setting you aside. Now, oh, there's a stamp. Okay, this is called Be Happy. Let's take a look at the stamp set. I didn't even mention the sucker. Sucker candy. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, that is so cute. Okay, so we have all bee themes and sunflowers. Oh, that shows how the stamp builder goes together. I love that. And, and it's also A1, A2, A3. So if you get confused, you know, you it's got the guide right on the acetate sheet. In a world of roses, be a sunflower. That's adorable. Loving the pattern. Oh my gosh, this is so funky. The bees, the queen's little queen bee hat there. See that little guy? This little friend, that would be easy to cut out. Thank you so very much. Sending love and sunshine. Don't worry, be happy. Today, you're the queen bee. Happy birthday. That's friggin' adorable. Believe in yourself and you can do anything. Sending sunshine and brighter days. That is an absolutely adorable stamp set. Now, there are, I would assume, coordinating dies in the store that you could pick up for this if you are a person who loves that. But some of these would not be too hard to cut out. This one might be a little trickier, but that would just be fun to do as a panel on its own. You know, just stamp that down right in the center of the card and then pop your little greeting on there. These would be very easy to cut out. That is really cool. Okay, I love that. Next, we are looking at our cardstock. Of course, we get one sheet of the Nina Sol or the Nina Classic Crest in the Solar White, which is my go-to cardstock. And then, oh, one big sheet of Simon Glossy. Now that's such a fun cardstock because it's got this lovely coating, the little sheen to it. Oh, that's fun. So that's look at the kit. Wow. Okay. Again, so so excited to see my little hello die in there. We'll put you there. We've got all our beautiful little patterns here with our papers. Oh, so good. The coordinating die cuts, the layered stencil. I mean, I may, I may have to start with, I don't know. I just, I love a good layered stencil, stamp set, these, this, I mean, friends. Oh, and the sanding disc, not the, not the tool, just the sanding disc. This kit is packed with fall goodness. So, I mean, I know it's not fall yet, but it's coming, people. It's coming. All right, let this, I gotta let it percolate, and then we'll get into our first card. For card number one, I'm going to start with this stencil because just the fact that it's, I don't know, it's spelled out for you. I think that's amazing. It's got the etchings on the back, and so I'm going to take some low-tack tape just to hold this down and then I'm gonna be ink blending on my grip mat, which will hold everything nicely into place. 
This is layer one. We'll just pop it down like this, and then the grip mat holds everything beautifully, right? Got that all in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take two inks, guava into cantaloupe, because I wanna have pink into orange flowers. So when I do all the blending here, I might as well just put on some music, speed it up a little, and I'll be sure to list all of the colors as we go. All right, let's get started. Is my blended panel so I think that is so cute it comes together so quickly you can use any colors you like I am going to trim this down just a little and I'm gonna grab that hello die cut from the kit and make a quick greeting quick tip I have been loving keeping a little alcohol in a bottle to quickly clean my stencils and I've been doing that in between each one to avoid having to run to the sink. A little alcohol in a pretty spray bottle, and this is just regular al rubbing alcohol from Target. Uh, it's a great way, if you just keep a cloth handy, to clean your stencils off. I created a little blend of ink that will match my panel, and all I'm going to do, let's see, is put it on my die cut plate. I'm going to cut the shadow layer out of this so that I have a nicely coordinated little piece and then I'm going to cut out three hellos in the white. I'll make sure I get away from there so that I can have a nice little white greeting with lots of contrast. And I'll cut all of these things out and glue them together. I added a little bit of spray glue to the back of each layer of this die cut. And this has a really nice, generous margin, which I think is really fun, especially if you have sort of a busy pattern. It's going to really help things to stand out. Of course, ink blending to match is always something you can do to create the perfect color match. Oh, my fingers are very sticky for your, your card. And I just have to figure out how to line it up. There we go. Sometimes I like building up on the layer itself. It might be a little off, but you know what? It's gonna look great that right on there and work my way across like that and that is my little coordinated greeting all right let's turn this into a card to finish out this card I trimmed down the panel to four by five and a quarter popped it up on a white note card and popped on my greeting all right card one done let's move on for my next card I'm gonna use this little friend and blend the whole panel. I'm gonna see if you can do that with just one. Um, I suppose you could have one of every for every color you have. I don't have that, but I am still feeling, I'm feeling a vibe here. So for now, for this card, even though when we get into some of the others, we might be going in a completely different direction today, for the first and second, we're in this direction. So let me again, pop on just a little music and we're going to blend out a panel and then I'm going to show you what my plan is.
All right, that is the blend. And I will say this is probably the softest going on that I've ever done with a blender. Um, for my hands and wrists, I feel like the brushes may be easier for me, but I've never used this, uh, this style of brush. And I think the blend is actually really pretty and it's way softer than I thought it was gonna be. So let me trim this down just a little and get my embossing folder. So now I've got my embossing folder, the crisscross floral, and I've got my spellbinders here. This is the Platinum 6 machine. Get you open here. Now, I have recently learned from my friend Amy Rasavi from Prairie Paper and Ink, a really great sandwich for 3D embossing folders on the Platinum 6. You take your platform, you take two metal shims, and then you take your piece. Now, I'm not going to mist this paper or do anything heroic. I am simply going to line it up, basically, and that is gonna push the pattern up. Yes, it is. This is the nubby side. And side to side, top to bottom. I think that looks good. And we're just gonna run it through. Spine going forward, and here we go. We're gonna add that beautiful texture. Let's take a look. Ooh, that is so cool. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It's just so subtle and pretty. Oh, I love that. Wow. That is gorgeous. All right, now I gotta come up with a greeting. So I've mounted this panel, which I trimmed to be three and three quarter by five, onto a white note card. Of course, now we're going horizontal. And again, more foam squares on the back. Well, they like to they like to stick around. Get it? Foam square stick. I'll be here all week. And then we get our good. Oh, by the way, I topped this with a little scrap of Simon Says Stamp Metallic Gold cardstock that I had in my scrap bin. It's a great cardstock for die cutting and adding a little bit of wonderful matte shine. And let's see here, I want this to be just right in the center, right in the center this time. And actually it's kind of easy with the pattern to kind of visualize that and see where it is. More or less. I don't, even, I don't even think I need to bring in the ruler for that. That looks pretty good. It's just such a happy little hello. It's casual. It's friendly. Now we've got a little shine. I'm just going to put a few sequins on either side of my hello. It's very simple. I probably could have done more with this, but I think this is cute. So let's add our gold sequins. Just a little on either side. Boop. Doesn't have to be perfectly reflective of the top or bottom. Boop. Get down there. Oh, I'm on the wrong cup side. Let's get a different one. I <laughs> the wrong cup side up. There we go. All right, so this is the second card, and I just really wanted to do it for the texture because that is just like. It's so simple, but look at how beautiful that texture looks, right? Let's zoom in there a little. You can really see the different levels in the 3D embossing. Some are a little flatter. It looks like these little crisscross florally blooms are coming right up. I think that is a gorgeous embossing folder. All right, let's move on. Next card, it's gonna be so easy and peasy and breezy. I can't even stand it, I think. But here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna use this as the basis for our card, and I am going to use, in a world of roses, be a sunflower. So I'm going to need to figure out a nice crop for this. And I think, this is why I really love having panel dies, because you can take crop, right, and plan your design, and then you know like, I think that's going to be great. Now, even though we're cutting some of this off, that's okay because you've got this beautiful pattern, right? And we're just gonna take what we want. I'm gonna take what we want. Doesn't that feel good sometimes? All right, let me cut this pattern out and just make sure 
that in a world of roses be a sunflower. I think that's gonna look very cute there. And it can even be up a little bit higher. So let me cut this out and then we'll stamp. Now I'm going to get out my Misty stamping tool. And in here, I've got a grip mat. So this is gonna hold my piece of paper in place while I stamp, all right? And again, in a world of roses, be a sunflower. I just think that's a cute, cute greeting. Kind of speaks to the individuality that people, you know, that people have and express. And I think that's gonna be so easy to stamp, right? That looks perfectly straight to my eye. Bring it down, I'll just take a look at the top. Yeah, that's gonna be good. All right, I'm gonna prime this a little, considering it's the first time I've stamped with it, and I'm just gently rubbing my finger over the stamp until it looks a little cloudy. And I'll use my Simon Says Stamp Intense Black just because it's a nice inky black and this is a really fresh pad. Get that ink on there. Now, this is a slick surface, so I'm going to have to be mindful that it's gotta dry because this pattern paper has a coating. And so that is gonna take a couple stampings And notice how it's all in the same place. I'm gonna do it one more time. I think that looks pretty good, but this is what I like. A little light tap and a little light drop and press is a great way to build up the inkiness. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love pre-printed pre papers that have cute little patterns that are totally ready to go. So I'll wipe this off, let this dry, and then we'll build out this card. Also, just a little tip, I will use ultra clean spray from Simon and my little scrubber block sometimes with the intense black. And it, if you do it right away, it really cleans off the stamp a lot better than just using a stamp chamois in water. So that's the way I usually clean off any inks that tend to be a little darker like VersaFine Clair or the Simon Intense Black. What I did was, is I cut this cardstock from the kit, sacrificing those little pieces, and I'm okay with that, uh, to have this little mat. But I wanted to show you something, and yet yeah, I know it, you could you could have cut the center out. I didn't. I was getting a little too aggressive. But these Simon Says Stamp Everyday Scissors, I, I don't show this enough, but they are literally the best non-stick scissors I think I've ever used for cutting foam. Better than even my smaller ones, these ones just cut through foam tape and nothing sticks. They're really, really fantastic. So just wanted to point that out. All right, let's get this popped up. This is banana cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. And even though I think my studio lighting makes everything look a little off when it comes to yellows, these match really, really nicely. And then I took one of the little um, die cuts from the, you know, I've already popped out a bunch of these from the little sheet. I think this one was, was not from, yes, it's from this one. And put little foam squares on the back because I thought it would be cute just to have one little bee. And what's fun about this, and this doesn't happen all the time, right, in the kits, but when you get a set of coordinating die cuts, right? And you just have to be careful because they're all tabbed in and I just took my little sharp knife here and as I was popping them out, I just made sure I cut it so that it would come out clean. Because I, I, I noticed that you, um, yeah, you have to be careful with that. But now all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put my little bee right there. <laughs> so he's coming in. And that is the fastest card I think of today. But look how cute that is. In a world of roses, be a sunflower, you've got the cute pattern, this beautiful paper. That's a really easy way to make a quick card with pattern papers. I love it. All right, let's move on. For the next card, I, I really wanna try this simple layered set. So I've got my classic sunflower colors. I'm not gonna do anything heroic other than, right, figure out where everything goes. Because here's the thing, the size of this, right, it's not, it's not huge. And I think I am going to be trimming this down a little. So let's start with our yellows. We could start with our yellows. We could start with our greens. Either way, I think it's gonna be pretty easy to figure out. 
And I know this panel is meant to be centered like this. So, and I'm going to trim it down a little. So let's move it over just a bit like that. I think that's going to be good. All right. We're not moving. We're picking it up. We are priming. And I am going with my darkest yellow in my positively saturated colors, and that is the citrine. Ink up. Oh, this is such a good color, and I haven't used citrine a lot because it is so bold. Transfer. Okay, get that in the middle there. We're gonna hit it again, because we want a nice, dark, solid impression. We're going for a very graphic look. All right. I think that looks good. I don't think I need to hit it again, but I might. It all dries back a little bit and smooths out. So there we go. Press, 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 and golden. All right, we'll clean this up. And the positively saturated inks clean up really well with just a damp chamois. So moving on, let's get the next layer. I feel like this one is also going to be very easy to line up because you can see where the stem is supposed to go, where the greenery goes, and I don't think anything's going to overlap, right? We're going to be just fine like that, right? I think that, yeah, I don't think much is touching, so let's do it. Pick it up, give it a go. Keep that there, it didn't move, and prime. And for this one, I'm gonna use Perfection because I think it's got a brightness but also a depth to it that's really nice with these darker colors. So Perfection, Perfection, inking you up. Oh, got a little place there that's not inking. You know what? I should wipe this. I didn't prime it well enough. Hold on. That's better. Bring it down and transfer the greens. Oh yeah, that's great. Oh, it missed in the center. Okay, there you go. There we go, that looks fantastic. I had a little water on there, so now it's gonna have sort of a, a watery vibe. And you know what, I'm okay with that. That's kind of cool looking. And press that in, like that. So simple. All right, get this cleaned up. Oh, wait, let's get you. Mm, mm. There, there, there we go. Get you cleaned up and get the next stamp in place. All right, pick up the centers. Oh, come on now, guys, I know you're sticky. There you go. I'm going to prime this as well. You can just see it go cloudy, and that's what you want. These stamps get really conditioned over time. Now, I may need to go darker, but I think I'm going to start with cappuccino and see what it looks like. I actually think this color is going to be great. And transfer. I guess I could bring in my press here. Oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good brown. Pop it up again. And get that extra in there. And even if you're slightly off, it doesn't matter. It's going to look super cute. And look at that little splotchy square of just solid Oh, I love it. All right, let's get ready to stamp the greeting. Kind of feeling this really simple vibe today of just stamping in black ink. I could do a don't worry, be happy, and on the inside I could stamp a little B, or I could just do sending, sun, sending love and sunshine or sending sunshine and brighter days, and then I would trim that out. I kind of like that. It's a nice encouraging sentiment, you know, and then this is very easy to line up and then I will trim the whole thing down for the note card. I think I'm just gonna do it in black. Really, um, I'm kind of in this black ink mode, and yeah, I think that looks straight enough. Let's do it. All right, and again, a little priming involved. I might just use my little cube of black onyx because sometimes when I'm when I have a little more detailed sentiment or if I don't have to worry about a slick surface I'm just gonna use a little of this pat it on and then just come in really lightly 
and we'll make a few passes. So we start light and we build up. Okay. Oh, I love this. I love the look. It's so graphic and fun. And again, I'm not pressing really hard. I'm just kind of dropping it down and saying, let's get that nice inky dark greeting. How fun. All right, let me get this trimmed down so we can make a card. Before I cut this down, I actually just had an idea. What if I took a marker and just put little dots inside the sunflowers? You know, that could ruin it. Actually, I'm going to take this right here and just see. I'm going to grab a package and see. Because, see, I have this little pointy guy, and it leaves the most perfect dots. And this is like Copic E37. I'm tempted to do it because I never, I never jazz things up. So I'm going to try it. Uh, let's put on some music and speed this up. Ready? Go. You know what? I actually think that looks pretty cute. <laughs> I didn't mess it up at all. Yay me. All right, moving on. To finish off this card, I took some of the glossy black cardstock to create a nice thin matte so you just get a little surprise of shine and I put it on a green leaf note card and oh and I stamped handmade by CZ design uh I stamped that on the back but that's the finished card isn't that cute this would be appropriate to send to anyone and I feel like I did a just fine job on the details of my sunflowers it could have gone south but instead it stayed well I guess in the center. All right, moving on. For the next card, I want to use this funky pattern and I want to use this kind of cool, I guess it's a kind of a fallish palette and I'm going to make a pattern. Now, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to look like. And actually, I wonder if, let's see here. I feel like, well, you know what? I don't know what I feel like. Let's just get it set up. Sometimes when I say feel like, all I think of is, I feel like chicken tonight. Does anyone remember that? Oh, I grew up in a good era. But see, here's the thing. I don't know if I want to go this way, but I kind of do. Well, okay. I'm going to start over here on the edge. Now, I don't know what this is going to look like, so bear with me. I'm turning it this way. I'm going to slide this over, prime the stamp, and I'm going to make a pattern. <laughs> I'm going to make a pattern. And if this doesn't work, you know what? We can start again because it's only paper. Let's start out with cantaloupe. And I'm going to ink up my stamp, a little cantaloupe, bring that down, and press. And I'll probably hit it twice just to get nice coverage because of course it's a new stamp and sometimes stamps take a little conditioning but i think that looks really cool plus this color is gorgeous all right you know what i could hit it one more i'm getting a little patchy again the beauty of a tool like the misty mm. changed my stamp in life okay we're good that looks lovely. And now, oh wait, we're going to get even more conditioned here because we're going to be cleaning this off in between colors. But yeah, this tool, I tell you, it's a good thing. And also, it doesn't have to be, if it's a little, if there's little splotchy places, that's okay because it's handmade and we want it to look funky, right? So here's what I don't know, having never used this stamp before. Can I paper piece some pattern together? Like, is there a way? Oh, look at that. Figured, figured as much. Now I think I'm probably far enough out. Doesn't, again, doesn't have to be perfect, right? But we're gonna bring in our next color, okay? And that's gonna be Sunbeam. Great, great yellow. This is pretty juicy. I don't know if this is going to need much. I just want to see. Did I put it? Oh, yeah, I did good. 
You know, again, I'm sometimes it's hard spatial ability wise. <laughs> that is so cool for me to see the perfect lineup, but this is this is a little pattern builder, and I think this is very cool. All right, I'm gonna use this. Looking mighty fine, coming together. We can come back in here. Oh, there's hair. Let's take our human hair out of there, because that, I mean, we like, we like DNA, right? But we don't, in the words of Pee Wee, like. Little, little homage, okay. I think that's probably good. We're gonna go with the blue next. So we have our sea foam. Now the cards I'm doing today don't necessarily have a color thread. You know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes I just want to do what feels right in the moment. That's a little bit spaced out, but that's okay. Because again, I am not perfect with the placement and spacing, but I do think this is fun. Okay. Okay. Probably enough, right? Yeah, I don't need to do that again. And then we will bring in our brown. Bringing in cappuccino. Oh, such a good brown. Cappuccino coming in and going down. I suppose I could have used my smaller Misty with this, but you know, I have the two tools and I use the two tools. And actually look at how it's starting to form like a, like a, almost an incomplete little guy. I bet if you keep stamping, and I could be wrong, but this is actually what I want. I want this sort of pattern, but I just wanna see. Let's wipe this off, and then two, I'm gonna come here. Gosh, that brown is pretty. Ooh, love it. Uh, I'm gonna make sure this is dry. Let's just dry it on the old arm. If you took this guy, oh, yeah, no, no, I don't think, I just wondered like, oh, I guess you could do, well, I guess you could do that, right? And then that would kind of close up your guy. Huh. I don't think I want to do that though. I just want this, but you could build out pattern and close it up, but we are going to go, we are going to go like this today. So let's get this lifted gently off of our paper, because I think that is just funky, right? I think that's so cool. Okay, got to figure out my grading. Putting it back in, because what if I did, oh, come here now. What if I did, today you're the queen bee, a happy birthday card, right? And again, I, I am just feeling this vibe of stamping right onto the cardstock. I don't know why, it just like, yeah, a little bit like that. I'm gonna stamp this in black ink again because I just think that is really cool. All right, let's see. Yeah, today you're the queen bee. And again, I'll just do this with my little cube of black onyx. I think this is dry enough that nothing's gonna feather and bleed. You just wanna give it a second, right? So that it doesn't do that. And again, do the very light press like that and lift. Oh, I got to get that in the middle. There you go. Make sure you get it. Today you're the queen bee. That is just funky and chic. Like that. Bring it down and press. Let that transfer. Oh, I love it. That is so fun. The question is, will it make sense just with honeycomb? Should I put a little bee? You know, I got one. I got the little, so there's a little bee here, and then there's a little crown. Oh, it's just, I think we gotta do it. Put a little tiny bee right there. I think that's really cute. Even if it's a little crooked, nobody's gonna mind. Hang on, I gotta get my head involved just a little. There we Pick it up. <laughs> so cute. I mean, this is such a kind of a funky graphic way. I think this is my favorite card so far. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes, you know, you get going, you make some things, and then all of a sudden you're like, I think I I think I'm I think I'm on a roll. I feel like that today with this kit. I don't know why. Some kits just feel like they have so many options. 
and uh, the stamp set is fantastic. All right, let me get the crown. Well, let's just do that because the, it's the B. Press down here. Let's just do a light little tap. Very cute. It's not going to look bad at all. It's going to look cute. Crown up there. Not supposed to be right on the head. That's perfect. Oh my gosh. I love it. All right. Now all I have to do is trim this down and turn it into a card. I thought of something kind of cool that I could do here. I could put a little pearl right in the center from my stash of each of the open um, little areas, right? I mean, it's it, I don't know if it's needed, but it, it, could, it could look cool or not. <laughs> Might take them off. Because honestly, I feel like I feel like this looks so good just by itself. I mean, I could do that. I don't know. It almost feels like why did you, <laughs> why did you do that? You know what? I am. I'm not gonna do it. I think this by itself is such a funky, cool card. That color palette, I am just digging, and that is the finished card project. The final card. I have an idea. So I have a panel of the black cardstock. And I am going to make sure that I impress, you can feel it, the nubby side is gonna push up, right, into the cardstock. So I'm going to line it up, knowing full well that you know me, I like to trim things down. And here's that sandwich again, just the old Spellbinders platform, two metal shims, and the cardstock. Let's go through. goes through so easily. All right, now let's take a look at this because this, I don't even, that is just crazy cool. It's got this metal-like feel to it, but it's got the, it's got the texture. That's step one, moving on. Step two, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something I've not done in a long time. And that is, I'm gonna distress some cardstock and what's gonna happen here on the edges right is it's gonna pick up right where the uh, you know the embossing is pushed up and we're just gonna scrape this up a little bit and add some distress who who am I Tim Holtz who <laughs> just kind of getting it messed up all right look at that almost wish I had one of those um, you know those distress edgers that uh, Ranger makes? I have, I used to, I think I had one once years ago. But we're just, we're making a mess. It's a, uh, you know, it's what it is. You just get a little, get a little random. It's hard for me to be random like this, but I, I have a plan. I'm gonna wipe this up. <laughs> Can you, I mean, think, think about it. Oh, look at that, it cleans right up. Can you think of the last time you saw me distress anything? Well, that actually looks really cool. Now, let me think about this for a second. What's next? Oh yeah, die cuts. Here's what I don't know. Do I want to map this on something like that? I, I wanna use a die cut, basically. I could reinforce this kind of honeycomb feel. You're not gonna see much of it, right? But I could put a little hello here. The question is though, I think the hello is gonna have to be something that has a little contrast and pop. And I don't know if I do wanna pop it up or do I want to, you know, layer on another flower? Do I have another flower in here? I've cut some of these out and I don't think I want to have, yeah, I don't want those. Let me, let me noodle on this and cut out a greeting so I can figure out what might work. I'm going to just glue this down on this and then I will trim off on either side to get sort of that little frame. Let me grab, what paper trimmer do I wanna to use to do this? Well, let me see if I can do this with my mini. Now, I've also made this greeting. Let's, oh yeah, this will fit, this will fit in here. Let's bring this so that it's right. Oh, sorry, there's my head. Right about like that, I think that's a about enough. Did I get, I think I got too much. All right, we're gonna have to trim a little off each side. Okay, how's that? Let's take a hair sliver off here, just a hair. 
Okay. Now, yeah. see, I think, you know what? You're going to have to roll the dice here, Kath, and have it be okay. Maybe just a little. Yeah, I think that's fine. Now, let me decide here. I think I do want to have a white note card. Um, I did punch out some of the greenery here. Where's the other? Here we go. And I'm going to see if I can make this work. So let me get a white note card and pop that up. So here's what I'm thinking. Actually, you know what I haven't used yet? I have not used my Distress Crayon. Whoops. Now, I don't know. Like, what would happen here? Let me, let me see. Uh, I'm going to screw it out just a little. You know what? If I just kind of did a little on some of these uh, little areas and then just kind of wipe it off or blend it in, that could be kind of cool, right? Because then it kind of darkens and adds a little brown. Now, this is not, I am not recommending this is, this is the way you want to go with these, but I just thought, Let's just bring it in a little, and you're barely gonna see it. In fact, um, I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rub my finger on it, and get a little smear going in there. There you go. Yeah, that's called an afterthought. You know, sometimes you're gonna make a card, and things are gonna go. Well, they're gonna go. They're gonna go crazy. Okay, and then again, I'm just gonna kind of blend. <laughs> this is where Kathy went vintage and lost her mind. Okay, yeah, there's a little brown in there, but it does look a little dirty. <laughs> so, all right, now if I took this, right, and I like the idea that that sunflower is pointing up and I put some foam squares on the back of this little friend, and then maybe I could work in, uh, you know, a little bit of the greenery here and a little bit in here, and then just put the hello right there. I mean, that's really cute and kind of vintagey. Not really my style, and if it were, if I were really being vintagey, I might add some vintagey stuff to the uh, edges, but I'm not going to because that will create a link for the parts that are clean. So let me find my glue, you know. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. This is definitely out of my wheelhouse, but I tell you what, I think it's fun, and I'm just going to use a little liquid glue here. I think it's fun to do stuff like this that maybe isn't your style, and you think, well, can I try this? And it's like, yes, you can, because this is cute. This is cool, right? It's totally different for me. I'm going to press that and hold it just so the glue has a chance to adhere. And I don't care if it's not perfectly flat and flush. In fact, why don't I put a, a brick on here, let that set up, and then I'll get my little friends off the back here. And again, getting, getting good use out of these thin foam squares, although I think I'm going to have to double them up for the greeting because I want the greeting to be above this flower. And this one, I guess it doesn't really matter which way it goes. I'm not going to do any liquid glue on here. I'm just going to say, as long as my greenery has an option to get in there, I'm going to pop that there. So we're creating a little, a little layer of dimension. And then this guy, well, shoot, he might have to come down here. Did I just create, huh? Uh, what if I did do that and had the smaller one coming up here? Actually, you know what? That might look better. You know what? I think, oh, I think that it does because then the hello can be right in the center. Okay, these little die cuts are fun, right? I love that they're just all connected in and we're gonna slide, get it in there wherever we can. Maybe like that. All right, a little bit coming out, and that's totally fine. If it, As long as this breaks the plane and will stay in the envelope, we're good to go. And I think we got stuck in there. Okay, a little here. And you don't have to put it on everything, just, you know, just enough to, well, that's a little aggressive there. Okay, and then bring this in right up there where that's coming down. Oh, I think that's actually really cute. Now, I'm going to put my foam squares 
let me get my little pick because again it's just so much easier we're just going to pick them up bottom 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 you know i don't know if i'm going to need to double them up but i might we'll see because this isn't like super popped up you know although yeah i think i do i think i'm going to double them up on the bottom so here's what you do take it take the bottom layer of the backers off and just put an extra layer on top like that just doesn't even have to be perfectly lined up that was a little sloppy but i think what we'll get then you can always just kind of test it it just gives you that little float time that you need and i know i used this die cut three times but i i love it i just think an all-purpose hello you're never gonna regret you're never gonna regret it you know i suppose i could uh, use the sander on that one I could I guess that would be the nice sort of um, that's how we uh, make things work together but I don't know if I'm going to because I just kind of like that oh! and that's my finished card that is the last one that I did so I did use my sanding tool I mean I guess I could what would happen though like if I yeah I'm gonna do it just a little because if you if you're trying to create that sort of vintagey look, why not? Sanding tools there. Let's let's get vintagey with it. There we go. Now that is the finished card project. I don't think I'm gonna put anything shiny on here because you know what? This baby, this is good to go. All right, let's take a look at all the cards I created today with the Simon Says Stamp Be Happy Card Kit. Oh wait, one more thing. I think I'm gonna put a tiny bee on here because they're just really cute. And I might as well, it's not gonna hurt anything. I'm just gonna take one little pollinator friend and just say, hi, I'm climbing up. Okay, now it's done. I feel like today's card range is pretty disparate and doesn't really like, some of them feel one way, some of them feel another way. We've got our cutesies, we've got our graphics, and we've got more of our vintage feel. So card one, loving that stencil, right? That stencil, you could, any colors you could come up with, but my favorite tip from this card is just ink blend your own background if you don't have the perfect color of cardstock for your shadow layer. All right, this friend, I think I could have done more with it. I really do, because the blend is so pretty to me, but I love the texture of the embossing folder. I love just the simple hello. Yeah, that's a very simple card. So, all right, setting that aside. Then this was probably the quickest card of all, right? Stamp a greeting onto the patterned paper, mat it on some patterned paper, throw it on a card base, and pop on a little bee. We like that bee. Again, totally not in what my style usually is, but I still love the way it turned out. Now this one, I love this because this does feel really graphic and printed and just that very, well, minimal style. I love Sending Sunshine and Brighter Days. Love the card, love the inks. And this one, this is my favorite today. I think it's because of that combo. I really love that sort of like a modern fall combo to me and I, I know it's not fall yet but you you know and today you're the queen bee happy birthday it's very subtle the honeycomb I think that's that's the winner for today for me but this one this let's zoom in this one has surprised me as I've been sitting here looking like I think it's really funky and fun and it's different for me sanding things up with the little with the little disc, you know, I might get more use out of this. You know, don't count, don't count Kathy out with the vintage. Never say never. And those are the finished cards for today. If you'd like to have this goodness delivered to your doorstep every month, become a subscriber to the Simon Says Stamp Card Kit. There is no long-term obligation. You can cancel at any time. The value is outstanding for what you get for the cost of the kit. You cannot get all these products on their own for even close to that cost. So it's a really great deal. And if you like to be surprised every month, like I am with this kit unboxing, then consider signing up today. You can find links to most of the products below the core products, but the full list is going to be over on my blog because it's just too long to fit in the YouTube description box. 
If you're not a subscriber, please become one today. Hit that notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post, and I will see you back here with more card projects soon. If you like kit unboxings, here are two more for you. I have so much fun opening these up and creating content. It is wildly fun, and I never know what's going to shake out.